Real Madrid minus 120 from minus 110. Bayern plus 315. First leg was 2-2. The draws plus uh, plus 280. Now, over three goals in this game at minus 105. Shouldn't nearly be a banker because Real Madrid on their own could score three. Bayern have unbelievably forward-thinking players, Mark O'Hare. Bayern Munich, double chance at plus 100. For me, it's all about Madrid. I think Madrid score twice at minus 140, but I think Madrid win the game at minus 120 as well. Uh, I found this one tough. Um, the first leg just epitomised Real Madrid for me in the Champions League. Um, how they've managed to sort of burgle the way out of that position and, and get a get a score draw because Bayern were the dominant force. They boss possession, created chances, then give away a really stupid goal. I mean, great pass from Tony Cruz, but the defensive positioning for Vinicius as opener was just um, yeah. criminal, really, from a Bayern under perspective. 15. Under 15. Yeah. Like, I pathetic. called it live. Um, I called it live. What was he doing in there, Kim? Um, yeah, I mean, he had, he had, a, he had a poor game, uh, which is yeah. disappointing, Ford really. Fender, but That's why. I like him. It's just it's not worked out really with Bayern at the moment. And um, but yeah, Bayern were the the better of the two teams. But um, yeah, you know, two lapses in concentration, and um, you know, you end up not winning the match. And you can understand the frustration from Thomas Tuchel and, and the players' perspective. They felt they deserved to win it, but that's always been the Achilles heel with this Bayern Munich side. Is um, you know, they haven't looked quite right defensively. They always give you an opportunity or two. There's always a mistake in that back line. And when you're playing a team like Real Madrid. You're going to be punished when you make stupid errors, and, and they were. So, um, But I think from a positive perspective, um, going forward, I think they've looked really lively. I think Thomas Tuchel has been pleading poverty with his lack of a, a midfield shield since joining Bayern Munich. But uh, Conrad Lyman has really stepped up this calendar year. He's looked really impressive in that role, been all action. Um, and I think he had a, a great game again last week. And, and actually, as we said at the start of the show, if you take in isolation, Bayern's performances in the Champions League from the quarterfinal stage, I think they've been very, very good, actually. Um, home and away against Arsenal and against Real Madrid. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how they approach this game. So I think stylistically, this might suit them a bit more. I don't think Real Madrid will be playing the same sort of style of being very reserved, sitting back, soaking up the pressure and just releasing the Brazilians when possession is turned over. I think they will be a bit more proactive. I think they, they ought to be really playing at home. So perhaps it allows Bayern to play their own game in transitions a bit more because um, I think when they're asked to sort of dictate possession uh, and unp unpick a, a sort of deep defensive line, they can look uh, a little bit ordinary at times. But I think playing on the counter-attack, they can look really threatening. We saw that at the Emirates for example, in the last round. So um, I found this really, really interesting, quite fascinating. I don't want to dismiss Real Madrid or oppose them by any stretch. This is, this is a team that's lost just once all season, and that was way back in September away at Atletico, uh, which is unbelievable, really. I mean, Bayer Leverkusen are getting all the plaudits, and quite rightfully so. But we're in May, and Real Madrid have lost one game in regular time all season. It's just mental. Um, and they have that sort of Houdini act where they just manage to find a way in this competition. We saw it in two legs against Leipzig. You know, Leipzig of the Bundesliga with a better team over two legs against Real Madrid. They were eliminated. Man City with a better team over two legs against Real Madrid. They were eliminated. So I don't really want to oppose them, even if I do think Bayern have a, a chance here, more than a puncher's chance of getting something. So um, I've gone elsewhere. I realise I'm not inventing the wheel here. Um, in fact, it's probably the most two, two of the most obvious selections on the, the whole coupon. But... The price has really appealed to me, actually. Vinicius to score at any time at plus 160 and Kane to score at any time at plus 175. I mean, two whopping prices for two very informed players and probably the most likely goal sources in their respective sides. Uh, if you look at the goal expectancy, the, the spreads are saying it's going to be about 3.1 goals. In this game, Vinny's got nine goals in his last eight starts since the beginning of March across La Liga and the Champions League. He had four shots in Munich. He had three when Real hosted Man City. He had six when Real hosted Barcelona in the Clasico last month. And then you got Kane, who doesn't really require any justification. He's on penalties. He's got 44 goals and 44 buying games. Six in eight since the start of April. Scored in three of their five knockout ties already. Uh, plus 175 is a stupid price on arguably the best finisher in world football. So, um, yeah, quite happy to back those two players at big prices, considering we probably are expecting at least two, maybe three or four goals in this match. Yeah, I, I thought that the uh, the over three was a complete bet to nothing at minus uh, 105. Bayern to score twice, a plus 165. Um, I, but I still, I mean, you, you can have a whole host. Bellingham, Vinnie Jr., Kane, 
Sane, if Nabry, it's just there's so much there. And then you've got the uh, centre-backs going forward. I just think over three goals at minus 105 is just, uh, I think that's where we start the game. I mean, we start the game 2-1 to Madrid and we can go from there. Uh, Mina, Madrid are going to have to, and the other thing is, before I, I hand it over to you, both of these sides are so much more comfortable on the front foot taking the game to the op opposition got to be goals oh yeah I, I think there's got to be goals in this in this particular matchup it's two great uh, attacks um Real Madrid probably with a better defense um up to statistics if you look at them it says 80 percent chance it'll be over 1.5 goals 70 percent 70 percent chance it will be over two and a half so I think everyone foresees a ton of goals in this particular matchup um, Bayern have scored at least two goals in their last three matches against Real Madrid in every competition and um, Real Madrid have seen over two uh, two and a half goals in their last six against Bayern so we know that when these two take each other on which is the most contested match in European football then likelihood uh, is that it's two powerhouses two player two teams with uh, incredible individual players who can make the difference I think Vinny Jr., Rodrigo, you're looking at Harry Kane, who's just been brilliant to watch. So um, Musiala and Sane, I think that's, if you look at the first leg, you, you'll notice that there were two massive errors, and that's Lucas Hernandez and the weakness, obviously, in Kim. Both of those were the defensive weakness in their, in their teams. Um, on this occasion, Danny Carvajal will be back, so Lucas Hernandez will not be playing in that position. Good, because he really struggled, um, especially when, uh, to hold changed over the wings and changed Sane um, at the time for Musiala. And you could see he had his hands full and it became a really difficult thing for him to do. I'm interested to see because Eric Dyer was withdrawn um, on Saturday with a head injury. So I don't know if he's going to start this match. Weirdly enough, he's been one of their better players, actually, at the back line. Um, I, I really don't know if we're going to see Kim there because there's also a doubt over De Delict. Um He should be starting uh, with Upper Meccano. Do you trust anyone? This is where I say to you, I mean, obviously, I, you know, Italians, they're the best defenders. We always look at them. But defense is not just what the man can do. It's how the team is arranged from midfield onwards. And it just seems like no one is really working for Bayern. There's always a problem in center backs. So I don't know what is going on there, um, but it doesn't, it, to me, the whole team isn't helping out in the way that it should be, in the way that, say, Madrid do. Um, it is about cutting out lines. Um, it is about offering... Um, covering your bases, covering markers. But more importantly, it's the way that the midfield played. You Are you making sure that that you're stopping everything that's starting? And I, I don't look at the way that they play as as being, it's, it's too individual for Bayern. Defensively, they're too individual. And so they allow themselves to, to be vulnerable in a way that I don't think Madrid are. I mean, I'm talking about this, it was 2-2. But in all honesty, I cannot imagine that Madrid would let this chance go. I think they're the stronger team. I look at them as being a team that always manages to do something because they study all the chance. Uh, they, they're good on set pieces. They're good in the details. They have players that you can bring on and change the way that the game is played, whether that's Brahim Diaz, obviously, um, who can keep possession. I think there's just options right now. And this is a, a competition that they seem to really soar in. And they have, more importantly, the right mentality in the dressing room. And I think that Bayern just look a little bit down these days. They've been relying on certain players shining at various moments. But if there's any coach who's really made life difficult other than Pep Guardiola, it has been Thomas Tuchel for, um, for Real Madrid. And I think that his team, his Chelsea in particular, were one of the hardest for Madrid to face in that year that they produced a thousand comebacks to win the Champions League. I look at this and I think it's a bunch of goals, but I think this being a, a Madrid victory. I think you have to have cojones made out of gold to bet against this team in this competition. So I look at this. The only thing that I worry about um, is Chalmini potentially being out, but you've got Rodrigo, Vinny Jr., Bellingham. You've named them all. Nice. They've got Rüdiger and Nacho in the back. I think that they've got more than enough to defeat this Bayern who's going to be away from him. I can see Bayern getting a goal, but I certainly see um, Madrid winning it. Yeah, Madrid and over. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm in the Madrid camp. Uh, and another reason I'm in the Madrid camp is because I think the pace of this game is going to be electric for a good hour. And then I look at the benches and think to myself, OK, we're not 100% sure. I mean, it's like the best kept secret of who's going to actually turn up and play for Bayern from one week to the next. But I think that the bench of uh, Real Madrid and uh, Ancelotti, 
the, he, his record speaks for itself. I've got to go with, uh, with Real Madrid, but there's many other ways. We steer clear of the uh, money line, but the one thing I don't see is penalties in this game because I think there will be a winner. And if that's Bayern, then all credit to them because they have got the weapons. Because the one thing about uh, Real Madrid is they don't keep clean sheets unless they're playing against the likes of Mallorca or, or Cadiz anyway. They do offer up chances um, because they haven't got recovering pace in midfield. And the one thing about Bayern, they've got pace in abundance when they win the ball and pass it quickly. Uh, let's have a little look at the official at picks. The official uh, picks. Lock eyes. Okay, Real Madrid and over one and a half at plus one one five. Real Madrid money line minus one twenty. Not even going to bother with uh, complicating <laughs> it. And Venezia's anytime scorer plus one sixty. Harry Kane anytime scorer is at plus one seventy five. Which, by the way, they both look too big. Uh, Marco here, they are absolutely gigantic. Them numbers. I mean, if you said to me Vinny Junior was like plus one twenty, I'd be tempted. And Harry Kane at plus one forty, I'd be tempted. And there you are at plus 175, plus 160. I think you should be arrested uh, for getting them numbers, to be honest. <laughs> it's true, though, isn't it? It's true, isn't it? You're looking Why? at the numbers going, Kane. how? Because you're expecting I, four or I five goals say, in this game. Yeah, that's true. Kane should never be, Kane should never, ever be above plus 150, regardless no. of who he's playing against. Free uh, kicks, just, penalties, insane. open play. So, hold on. So, Bayern have the highest XG in Europe, not counting penalties. They've got the highest XG in Europe. So, we're talking about two teams that score a bunch of goals and two of their best forwards, right? We're talking about... European best... goal scorers. How is Mbappe minus 140 and these guys are... I don't know. No, exactly. And that's why you've got to hunt around and you've got to be... Uh, obviously, see the wood for the trees. You Just don't be listening to whoever shouts loudest. I mean, you've got to have your own mind and spot... When there's value on Kane, free kicks, penalties, headed goals, rebounds, ricochets, uh, and Vinny Jr., he can torment anyone. So, yeah, listen, that's great value, and I hope that people go with that. Oris has shown uh, five cards in six European games. He's going with uh, Osato to basically give over uh, the four and a half cards in the PSG Dortmund game. Dortmund win on penalties. Uh, exactly. Don't make Flash get on his soapbox about XG. It's nonsense. It's absolutely nonsense. Uh